Hey everybody, welcome back. This is part 13 of working with numbers in the operators and methods unit. So now we're going to talk about parsing an integer or a float from a string. So you might get a situation where you have a string embedded in which is a number that you either need the integer version or you need a float version of. And by float we just mean decimal. It's not an actual separate number or a separate type like it is in some other languages, but it does allow you to save the decimal places if you use parse float. So here are two versions of that. And we're going to kind of do both of these together because, you know, they're rather similar. So parsed integer is going to be equal to number.parseInt, and then we pass in a string version of a number, and then the same thing for a string version of a decimal or a float. If we run both of these, we're going to see uh, these are now numbers. So hooray right for the home team. We're going to, going to do these with some variables. So let's go ahead and say that we have a user ID string, which we got off of some kind of string. And then parsed user ID is going to be equal to the number, sorry, number.parseInt of the user ID string. And then we're going to console.log parsed user ID. The exact same thing is going to be the case for our user rating string. And we'll log that after parsing the float. So we'll run both of those. We get a very similar output. So now let's talk about the actual coding challenges. We're going to complete a function that takes in one string parameter representing an integer and returns the result of parsing an integer from the input. Your function should create a variable and assign it to the result of applying number.parseInt to the input parameter, then return that variable. Below is an example of the code running. Assuming that you will have completed the described function, apply parseInt. So let's talk about it. Grabbing our test case, we're going to follow the pseudocode apply parse int on a num string. So we'll say variable result is equal to number dot parse int and then apply that to num string. Then we'll return our result. And if we run this, it should be 23, and it is. It started as 23 though, so let's go ahead and make sure that it works by pasting it into our input window. And excellent. We're not really in any kind of shape yet. I mean, not really, but we're going to do the other function first. We're going to complete a function that takes in one string parameter representing a float, which is a decimal, and returns the result of parsing a float from the input. Your function should create a variable, then assign it to the result of applying number.parseFloat method to the input parameter, then return that variable. Below is an example of the code running. Assuming that you will have completed the described function, apply parseFloat. I'm going to grab our parseFloat function, function stub, grab our test case, and we're going to create a result variable, set it equal to number dot parse float of the input string, which is a num string. A num string isn't a thing. That's just what we're calling the input to remind us that it is a string representing a number. So we'll return result. And if we run this, it should be 101.78. It is. Copy this. Send it back over to the input window and find that we are in magnificent shape. Excellent work. So, thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.